the truth of girls. Hi everyone. You know all the advice that you see on the internet about how if you're depressed, you should talk to your friends and your family about it so you can get support? Reality check? That's not how it works. I know this is not what people want to hear, but the fact is that if you're depressed and you tell people about it, in the beginning they might be like, oh, hugs, uh, I'm there for you. But you know what? They're like that for about five minutes on Facebook. But if you chronically struggle with d depression, you try to reach out to people and you will find that over time they will abandon you because they don't really know what they can do. And real chronic depression, there's no like simple solution. It doesn't matter if you talk about your problems. It doesn't matter if your friend gives you a hug. It doesn't matter uh, if somebody pep talks to you. It doesn't matter what they post on Facebook. None of that is going to solve your depression problem. So people around somebody who's chronically depressed and they're trying to be su supportive and eventually they get tired of doing it because they get burnt out. And as far as they're concerned, the depressed person is just a negative person and someone they don't want to be around. That's the truth. The reason I know this is that I'm someone who actually has struggled with chronic on and off depression probably my whole life. And I remember when I was in my 20s, I think I was 24, and I remember I was on the phone with my friend Tracy. It's all right. For Clemped. I really am for Clemped. I know I'm like trying to diffuse it with humor, but I was on the phone with Tracy and I said, I can't live like this anymore. I said, it's, it's never going to end. And I just, I can't see myself living years and years and years, you know? And she's like, you know what? I'm really sick and tired of hearing about this. And I'm, I'm tired of this and you need to do something about your problems. She's right that it was up to me to do something about my problems. And I understand she, she was frustrated hearing about it. But it was in that moment that I decided I will never again tell people around me when I'm that low because they don't want to hear it. They, they can't do anything about it. And all it's going to do is it's going to push those people out of my life. And I'm going to end up more alienated. So I decided to take the approach of putting on a brave face. Anyway, the reason I'm telling you this is not to discourage you and, and make you think people are all a bunch of bastards because they don't care about you. I'm, I'm going to tell you, in fact, though, what I have done to cope because, like I say, I've been dealing with this. I've been dealing with depression for probably, like, my whole life, and I burn out easily. And I burn out from things that other people would, it wouldn't burn them out, like just being around people too much at all, even though I like people. Um being around sounds or, or, or not having enough time myself or not having time to like work on my own things that I'm interested in um, completely levels me and it can usually it can be like two or three days uh, it can go on for weeks and if I if I don't get to recover well it can just get worse and worse and worse and like what, what I experienced a few years ago when I, I did these videos about adrenal fatigue that's what it turned into and yet as you see I'm still here I, I'm not dead and I haven't completely burnt out. I'm still not in the mental hospital. I don't know how that happened. Somehow I managed to not, you know, end up on a lot of medications. Um, and somehow I managed to live my life. But let me tell you, it's a struggle. But what I want to tell you is there is one thing that I found that is really, really effective. It's remarkably simple and it's exercise. And if you're super burnt out, obviously you can't do a lot of it. But you have to find a way to do something. Anything is better than nothing. Exercise, it seems so simple. It's good for depression, for anxiety, to lower stress. You produce serotonin, dopamine, and endocannabinoids. It's like a, a little chemical cocktail. And it's free. And it's not going to land you in rehab either. You know, I wanted to make more videos this week about what was going on with the Trump inauguration and what was going on with a bunch of other things. And I realized that, you know what, my brain's not working. I can't even think. And look, it's winter. Like, I get like this every winter. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure there's some of you out there that feel just as miserable. Look, I'm almost crying. It's winter. Canadian winter. Maybe it's the light or I don't know what. 
I mean, I stoically withstand this pretty much every year without talking about it. Uh, but I found that eventually, if you don't do something um, major to address it, you can end up like in a really, really bad state. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go down to the gym. I'm going to make that a priority. Because usually my son's schoolwork is a huge priority for me because he won't do it at school and it takes forever to do it at home. He's extremely uncooperative. He doesn't look even when you just say look. He won't. He's very hard to teach because he won't watch, he won't imitate. Like usually when I do videos about my son, I don't really tell you what it's like day to day and why he has a shadow, why he has so many problems. He just looks normal to you. I know he does, but he's got some serious problems. It's very, very hard raising him. It's very stressful. It's t totally out of the ordinary, beyond what you can imagine. <laughs> Prayer is important too, but look, in my experience, to be totally honest, I have gone to church, prayed, felt some relief for a couple hours, and then like the next day, it was all back again. Just because prayer works doesn't mean you don't have to do anything else to put the odds on your side. Sometimes what I actually do is an exercise slash prayer combo. Like I'll literally get on the treadmill feeling totally broken hearted, no energy, and I'll pray as I'm walking. You know, I'll pray to God. I'll pray like, you know, Lord, make my body strong, um, heal my body, you know, restore my mind, uh, strengthen my body and my mind so that I can serve you and, and so that I can take care of my family or whatever it is. I'll just, I'll pray like that. I'll think about the woman and, oh, I always forget. It was in one of the Psalms. You know, a woman of virtue, uh, her worth is above rubies. And it, it you know, it, it actually really gets me. I'm waiting till I'm not going to burst into tears to finish what I was going to say, which was the woman who's described in this passage. It says, she girdeth her arms with strength and strengtheneth her loins. I listen, I, I think about that passage for inspiration. She girdeth her arms with strength and strengtheneth her loins. And I'm like, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to, I'm going to um, rehabilitate my body. And Lord, please rehabilitate my mind. Rehabilitate my spirit. Because I am so weak. And there, and I, and there's so much writing on how strong I can be. My whole family depends on me. My son depends on me. Lord, make me strong so that I can do this. Because giving up for me, it's not an option. Because giving up and saying, I'm done. I'm just going to sit down. I'm depressed. I can't cope. For, that's giving up on my son. Because he needs me to be strong. Because he's got his own problems. And I'm probably his best advocate in this world. And I'm not just going to sit around and cry about it. Because, you know, like emotional discharge now and then it feels good. But what I need to do is I need to get in that gym. And I'm going to pray, Lord, make me strong. Make my body strong and fix me. Make my mind strong and make my, make my spirit strong. So I can deal with everything. And I can, I can take good care of this gift, my son, that you gave me. Hello, this is Aunt Flo sitting in for Sonia while she's off having a nervous breakdown. Now, as she says, exercise is good for you. But you know what? Prayer is good too. Better yet, pray while you're exercising. Get on that treadmill and start praying. Lord, help me get through this workout. Lord, help me out having a nervous breakdown. You get to doing those squats and you pray, Lord, gird my loins with strength. Amen. And then you get to doing your yoga. And you don't worship Satan while you're doing it. You put your arms out in a true position and you say, Lord, I receive your love. I receive your healing. It's Christian yoga. I invented it. You just pray through your whole workout. Whatever big pharma wants to shove down your throat in a pill, you've already got it somewhere in your own body. You've got all those chemicals naturally. You just got to find a way to bring them out and make them work for you. Well, I have an extensive wig collection, and I find it has a remarkable ability to lift my spirits. Secretary wigs, mullet wigs, Anita wig, oh, so many wigs. I do love the wigs.
Now I realize this might not work for everybody, but it works for me. What? I got gremlin behind? Oh, my gremlin's back. While I was making this video, my son came home from school. But put your clothes back on. I better quit fooling around or I'm not gonna get to the gym today. Where's the gremlin? Hey. Ah, food color. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, get out of here with your I just want to say to those of you who are dealing with this this winter, don't be discouraged. There is hope. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Anyway, I hope you guys are okay and you're not depressed with the winter blues or the seasonal affective disorder. And I hope that I'm going to come out of this and next week I'll be doing some dynamite videos about all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world. Um, so thanks for listening to me. Love you guys. God bless you. Stay strong through this winter, and I'll see you next time.